Hey econ students, this is Jacob Clifford. The AP macro exam is just a few days away, so I made this video to answer your questions and to give you my FRQ predictions. I'm also leading a live review session the night before the AP exam, so I hope to see you there. <laughs> Some students wonder why I'm not doing more live review sessions, and the answer is simple, efficiency. Live reviews are great, but they're not efficient. What you need to be doing in reviewing might be different than somebody else. So the best use of your time is looking at released free responses, doing practice questions, or watching the videos where I walk through free responses in the ultimate review packet. Okay, that said, let's answer your questions. Mr. Clifford, can you pee without pooping? Yes. Yes, I can. Mr. Clifford, can you make a video of what scores you need to get a three, four, or five on the AP test? This is the breakdown from the 2019 AP macro exam. It's different every year, but in general, you need about 85% to get a five and a 58% in order to pass. Last year, about 17% of the students got a five, 23% got a four, 25% got a three, so about 35% of the students don't pass. But not you, you're watching my videos and you're putting in the time. Mr. Clifford, how much detail or time should I spend on the FRQs? I made a different video that gave you some tips on the AP macro free responses, but here's some more advice. When it comes to these free responses, answer the question they're asking and stop. Years ago, I was a table leader and I'd see students all the time write themselves out of the correct answer. They'd say the real interest rate would go down, but if this happens, then the real interest rate might fall. Like that stuff's gonna get you in trouble. Just give them the answer answer the prompt. On exam day, you're gonna do the multiple choice section first, then take a break, then do the free responses. And the free response section starts with a 10 minute reading period where you can read the questions over and organize your answers. I strongly suggest you read all three questions to make sure you understand what they're asking and see if some questions are harder than others so you know how to allocate your time. You can also start writing your answers below the questions, but you have to transfer it over to your answer document that's gonna look like this. Mr. Clifford, should we leave hard questions that take too much time and go back later? or try to solve them right there. You're definitely gonna see some hard questions, either on topics you haven't learned yet, or questions that require a lot of calculations and a lot of time. In my opinion, it's better to skip those, star them, and come back later to make sure you get all the questions done. It would be horrible to spend all your time on a really hard question and miss out answering the last five or 10 questions because you're working on a question that you probably are gonna get wrong anyways. Okay, now let's talk about the content. Mr. Clifford, what equations do we need to know besides CPI, GDP deflator, real GDP, and nominal GDP? A great question. Make sure you know these equations and unemployment, the spending multiplier, the money multiplier, and how to calculate the real interest rate. You should definitely fill out the ultimate cheat sheet in the ultimate review packet, have all those equations in your brain, look at the paper right before you walk into the AP exam. Mr. Clifford, why is the long run average supply curve vertical. If you haven't seen it already, make sure to watch the video on YouTube where I go over the key graphs that you need to know. I explain concepts like that in this video, so make sure to watch it. The quick answer is aggregate demand can increase or decrease in the short run, but in the long run, the economy is going to self-adjust and put us back at that vertical long run aggregate supply. In other words, it's vertical because in the long run, eventually we're going to be at the exact same output regardless of the change in price level. And again, that's in the long run. And watch out for that on multiple choice questions. The question is going to say in the short run or in the long run, Whatever that is, is gonna change the answer, so read carefully. Now, the vast majority of questions I got were about the new stuff in the AP curriculum, ample and limited reserves, and the reserve market graph. It's really not that hard, just take a deep breath. This is the new graph you need to know, and so far they haven't asked it on a free response, but they could this year. For all the details, I suggest you watch this video, but here are the three big takeaways. Number one, the reserve market graph is different than the money market graph. The money market shows the demand for money by individuals. The reserve market shows the demand for reserves by banks. Big takeaway number two, the effectiveness of traditional monetary policy depends if the banking system has ample reserves or limited reserves. If there are limited reserves, then the three tools of monetary policy will work. If there are ample reserves, those tools don't work. And big takeaway number three, when there are ample reserves, the central bank changes the interest it pays banks, the interest on reserves, to conduct monetary policy. Now you might have to draw this graph on the fear response this year, but it's more likely you're gonna see a question on one of these general ideas instead. Okay, here we go. It's the moment you've been waiting for. My predictions on this year's fear responses. Now a warning, I don't know what's on the fear responses. This is just my educated guess. So don't get mad at me if I'm wrong. I also put a bunch of other teachers predictions on my website so you can see what other people think are gonna be on the exam. And don't forget three days after the test, I'm gonna make a video going over the answers and find out who had the best prediction. Okay, here we go. Here are my predictions. The first free response is gonna be aggregate demand and supply showing a negative output gap. They're gonna have you draw the graph in part A and then in B, explain what's gonna happen if there's no policy and there's a long run self-adjustment. They're gonna talk about monetary policy, have you draw the money market graph and explain if there's ample reserves or limited reserves, what policy would work. 
I think fear response number two is gonna focus on foreign exchange. So drawing the graph and explaining what's gonna happen when there's a change in real interest rate on the graph that you drew in A. Then they're gonna ask about the balance of payments and how a higher real interest rate would cause the capital and financial account to move towards a surplus. And they're gonna finish it off by saying if the currency appreciates, how is that gonna affect net exports? The answer is it would decrease, right? If the currency appreciates, other countries are gonna buy less of your stuff. Now for fear response number three, I thought maybe bank balance sheets, maybe comparative advantage. I don't think it's either of those. I think it's gonna focus on calculating GDP and the GDP deflator. So a question when they give you some products, you have to actually calculate the nominal or the real GDP. Then I think they're gonna switch over and talk about fiscal policy. And maybe as a question, we have to actually calculate the maximum change in spending from an initial change in government spending. So make sure you know how to use that spending multiplier. Okay, that's it. The next time I'm gonna see you is the night before the AP exam at the live review session. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time. This is your time. Now go out there and take it.